Valtharis comes from the development team behind Slain Back From Hell and offers a similar pixel aesthetic and metal soundtrack. Set in the confines of space, with a mix of big guns, big aliens and big hair, is it worth picking up? I'm Glenn for Switch Up, thank you to the developers for the review copy and now let's find out. The story of Valfaris sees the titular planet reappear, having mysteriously disappeared from galactic charts a long time ago. Once a paradise, the planet now plays host to an ever-growing darkness. Therion, a proud warrior, returns to his home planet to try and uncover the truth and free it from the evil that has taken over. Valfaris is a run-and-gun action platformer in a similar vein to the classic Contra games or especially the Turrican games, of which I played a lot of Super Turrican on the Super Nintendo as a kid. You traverse the levels, shooting a barrage of enemies that will appear in front of you or behind you at times and you will need sharp reflexes in order to stem the flow of these enemies. Your character has a health bar and each hit you take will deplete this, although you will occasionally find health pickups left by slain enemies to assist you on this front. In terms of your weaponry, you begin with a standard pulse rifle fired by pressing the Y button and a melee sword attack that is used by pressing X. Shortly into the game, you will pick up your special gun and this must be powered by your energy bar. Using your melee weapon will fill your energy bar so it's good practice to take out the weaker enemies with the sword when your energy bar is running low. Your energy bar also powers your shield. The shield is used by pressing ZL and activating it just at the exact point of impact from an enemy's projectile will give you the opportunity to absorb the attack and fire it back at the enemy by pressing ZL for a second time. Holding down ZL is also the default method for locking your character into place, although all controls can be customised and personally, being right handed, I found ZR much easier for this. Valfaris' main gameplay mechanic revolves around the resurrection idols. You will find these at various intervals throughout the game and their purpose is twofold. Firstly, they can be used to power the checkpoints you will pass every so often. If you do not place a resurrection idol in a checkpoint done by pressing R, then the checkpoint will not register. So why would you not want to save at every checkpoint? Well, simply put, for each resurrection idol you have in your possession, the number of which is identified in the top right corner of the screen, your health bar will be extended. Therefore, using one of your stock as a checkpoint decreases your health bar slightly. It's a very interesting risk reward system, allowing those who want to, to save regularly, whereas the more daring amongst you can push yourselves by going longer between saves. You have a set amount of idols that can be in your possession at any one time, and any you collect after this will just be used to refill your health or energy bar. You can, however, increase the number of idols you have in your possession as you make progress. Checkpoint statues also allow you to upgrade any of your weapons. In order to do this though, you must first locate blood metal tokens. These are found scattered around the world, sometimes in hidden areas, whilst other times in breakable scenery. Each upgrade will cost you more of your blood metal tokens than the last, so you may want to think carefully about which weapon it would benefit you to upgrade. You will find new weapons for each of the three classes at fairly regular intervals, and one thing I really did like is that finding a new weapon didn't necessarily mean that your old weapon, with any upgrades you've put on it, automatically become redundant. For example, the new shotgun you find may pack a serious punch, but the lack of rapid fire may hamper you in your current plight, meaning that each weapon genuinely has strengths and weaknesses. As much as I enjoyed the variety of weapons, I didn't use the upgrades very much, and was still able to get very far into the game, so this is one area that perhaps could have been implemented a little bit better. Although areas have a more open level design than something like Contra, again probably closer in design to Turrican in this respect, they are still very linear. This is not a metroidvania in any way shape or form, no map is required as the game will lead you where you need to go. There are occasional secrets to find though, such as hidden weapons, which I really liked. Then there are the boss battles. These enemies are big and imposing and put up a stern challenge although they do stick to quite a strict attack pattern which once figured out makes a couple of them, especially early on, a little bit too easy in retrospect although there was one fairly cheap moment as a boss near the end of the game that was a bit unnecessary and by and large the boss is certainly up their game towards the end. Gameplay is slick, adrenaline fueled and as tough as nails. The resurrection idols are a clever gameplay mechanic and the stream of new weapons keeps things fresh and gameplay receives 19 out of 20. As already alluded to, controls work well, although some of the default button configurations were not to my personal tastes, but as mentioned they are fully customizable and controls receive 18 out of 20. 
As a big fan of pixel art, it has been a pleasure at times to see just how well the style has been implemented during this console generation. Valfaris continues this trend with some of the most impressive pixelated visuals on the Nintendo Switch. It pulls its influences from far and wide. There is clearly still a heavy rock influence both in character design and music, which we'll get to later, but certain aspects have also been inspired, you would think, by artist H.R. Geiger, with his iconic xenomorph design permeating through a lot of the statues and architecture of this alien world. The backdrops give a real sense of scale. They display enough to give some context of just how outnumbered you are and just how alone you should feel with scenery that extends far and away into the distance. The use of built up yet derelict looking areas, the monolithic pillars and columns merged with metallic structures and spacecraft, the sense of a technologically advanced world that still manages to feel dilapidated and worn. It has all the familiarity that you would expect of a world built around typical dystopian future tropes yet still manages to feel completely new. This could be LV-426 from Aliens, Fury-161 from Alien 3, or Planet Zebes from Super Metroid. Such are the strangely nostalgic feelings you will encounter as you venture deeper into this dangerous new world. Another standout feature of the visuals is the use of colour. Never have I seen a game use such a gaudy colour palette, constantly at odds with itself, yet manage to pull off such a stylish outcome. The neon blues, yellows, pinks and greens insult your eyes but leave you screaming for more at the same time. It evokes memories of 80s punk which again creates an odd juxtaposition of new and old, an anachronistic future if you will, which works fantastically well. The main character sprite has quite a low level of detail, with the main characteristics being his swaying hair and the way he carries his weapons. A little more detail on this sprite would have been appreciated, but to be fair, it does work quite well against the highly detailed backgrounds. The enemies are varied between areas, and some of them are hugely imaginative. The heavy rock soundtrack comes from former Celtic Frost guitarist Kurt Victor Bryant. Now I know very little about extreme metal music, but I read that Celtic Frost were a heavy influence on avant-garde metal, which uses unconventional song structures, instruments or vocal techniques. The music absolutely gets your blood pumping. As I said, I don't listen to rock music, bar maybe a little bit of Nine Inch Nails after seeing The Crow for the first time back in the day, but whether the music is to your taste or not, it's the feeling that it gives you as you blast your way through hordes of alien creatures. It feels a bit like a 2D version of Doom at times, with the hellish setting and the kicking music. The visuals are pixel perfection, with the backgrounds being some of the best in recent memory and receive 19 out of 20. Audio is balls to the wall, all out and in your face, and complements the carnage on screen perfectly and scores 18 out of 20. Valfaris costs £22.49, €24.99 or $24.99 and for this price you get a fairly lengthy adventure for run and gun standards plus production values that are extremely high. There is not a huge amount in terms of replayability unless you want to try and find all of the resurrection idols or hidden weapons but this is certainly a game I could see myself returning to every six months or so just because it's so much fun. There is a physical release plan that is due to be priced at around the same as the digital version, so well worth picking up this way. Value scores 17 out of 20. To conclude, Valfaris is an absolute joy to play. There are some very good run and guns on the Switch, with the Contra Collection for a start, as well as newer games like Blazing Chrome and Gunlord X, some of which are a fair bit cheaper too, but none of them get all of their elements as right as Valfaris does. It's high adrenaline gameplay mixed with pixel art that is absolutely on point as well as a rock soundtrack that acts as a beating heart that makes everything else thump wildly. Some may find the price a little high but if you can stomach that there's no other reason not to get this game. Valfaris gets a switch up score of 91%. Thank you everybody as always for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, please do remember to leave a like if you did. We've been spoilt with some absolutely cracking games recently, this being one of them, and it's certainly a great time to be a Switch owner. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.